Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, that brings us to our first public comment. Is our uh, first public comment is 15 minutes. If you have a comment, please step to the podium. Going once, going twice. No real people here. They're all all participants tonight. <laughs> is uh, everybody else is enjoying the weather? Yep. <laughs> is we have no public hearings tonight. Is uh, reports of committees. Is uh, BCTV committee is meeting next week, I believe. So is uh, we'll get their report on the next one. And I have nothing from the Envision Berwick. Um, is um, I am going to start participating in Envision Berwick again. Is uh, they're going to be meeting on this Thursday. Is I'm um, hoping with all the other meetings we have going on on Thursday afternoon that I can make that one. Um, <clears throat> we have no department reports tonight. Is uh, appointments. We have Linda Corliss who wishes to be appointed to the MSAD 60 Board of Directors for a three-year term. Linda, please. Hi, good evening. Okay. Like I said, I see you all. My name is Linda Corliss. I live uh, currently on Knox Lane. I am a lifelong resident of Berwick. Grew up here. Corliss family's been around for a long time. Um, I graduated from Noble High School in 1988. I um, went to school, remained here, raised my daughter here, who also graduated from Noble High School. I have a strong belief in community engagement and citizen participation. Currently, I am the treasurer and member of the Burke Historical Society, which I enjoy very much. I am an active member of the John F. Hill Grange and the Sanford Springville Rotary. All organizations that I think foster uh, community involvement. Professionally, I'm just trying to give you, they asked me to give you a quick background of me. So uh, professionally, I have an associate's degree in criminal justice. I have a bachelor's degree in liberal studies with a concentration in human resource management. And I am currently a, uh, enrolled in attaining my master's degree in public administration. Professionally, I uh, have been employed in the field of human resources for 15 plus years, both in the private and public sector. The last uh, five and a half years. I've been the HR director for York County government. So I've been working in the municipal field. Um, it gives me a little bit of a background on municipal budgets, union negotiations, and I think collect collaboratively um, communicating and working with various departments and outside agencies, which I think will all be beneficial for this particular position. Um, I believe the combination of my education, my um, social commitment my, and my community involvement makes me a good candidate for the um, school board and my desire to volunteer for three years. I thought it was one, but three years is good. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in um, looking at each student as an individual. I was talking earlier with somebody and I said, you know, um, you, put, you put a community through the school, students through a community school, but each student, you have to sort of look at how do you financially balance the fact that some kids are going to go on to uh, and need to be educated to go on to high-end colleges, others need to go on to vocational, others are going in the military. And then there are those who just need that basic education and who are going to go on um, and they're going to be your store manager for the rest of their life. All reputable, good careers. Um, and so you've got to balance that. And my goal is to be supportive of the superintendent and the rest of the school board in trying to balance you know, financial sustainability because again, budgets are a big thing um, and the quality of education that are coming out of our town. I'd be happy to answer again. I just gave a real brief snapshot as I was told to, uh, but um, any questions that anyone has, I'd be happy to answer for you. Just one question. Sure. Why didn't you uh, run on the ballot for the school board? Good question. Um, I actually uh, just have been considering it. My Grange, I used to belong to Riverside Grange in Lebanon, and it closed recently, lack, lack of participation. Um, so uh, the Historical Society, I, I kind of really wanted to get into that. Um, we're a small group, but I think we're a good group. And I talk a lot about getting involved in my community, in my town, and the experience that I have with a county government, I actually I was talking with the county manager, and and he said, "So, what do you, where do you want to go? What do you, what do you want to be involved in?" 
And I said, you know, I don't have a student at the school, but it was a really, really important when my daughter was going to school. It used to drive her crazy because she was a she was a BC student. Um, but I went to every single parent-teacher conference and all of those things, and she used to roll her eyes and say, why? I said, because I need to be involved. Um, I don't need to be that thumb and a teacher. I just want to communicate, be involved. Um, and so when I was talking with him, he said, you know, Linda, you really ought to, if you got an interest, you really ought to run for the school board. At the time, it's right around, we were just fi finishing the budget process. The election was coming up. I wasn't really familiar with the process. So when I inquired originally, I said, uh, I think I sent an email to you and to Patty just saying, what is it I need to do? I wasn't sure if I needed to run. Um, you know, how do I get involved? And they, well, unfortunately, the elections just passed, you know, but we, um, but nobody, I put my, well, I put my name on my ballot. <laughs> I voted for myself, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, and that's what, when I wrote my name on there, I said, geez, I wish I had known. I would have ran, I would have spoken about, you know, why I want to be on the school board. So that's when I decided to send the email and say, well, what is the process? You know, if I want to do it in a year from now. And then they said, well, you don't have to wait a year. Why don't you come on in and talk to the uh, Board of Selectmen? So that's why I'm here. And that's why I, I just, I missed the election. Well, I appreciate you're willing to serve. I do have a procedural question for this type of thing because I don't know, do we need to put it out to widespread to say no? We're considering uh, somebody no, or just because, wait? because because nobody ran, and, and there was nobody on. Uh, I guess there were quite a few write-ins, but everybody got one vote. <laughs> right. Like if I if I had known you were running, I would have written your name. You would have gotten two votes, and it would have been a moot point. But is uh, and since she's not filling in. The remainder of somebody else's term is, is our understanding that we can appoint her to the full three-year term. Okay. Uh, I, it, it wasn't <clears throat> the appointing to the three-year term. Right. It was more, do we have to put it out and get solicit yep. invitation? No, but because I, we, we did that with the initial nomination papers okay. and things, that we went through all of that and nobody took advantage of it, that now we know we can do the appointment. Uh, I do appreciate your willingness to serve. Mm -hmm. uh, so glad somebody was willing to step up. Yeah. Um, I move that we appoint her to the school board. For a three-year term. For a three-year term. We're not going to let you get away easy. <laughs> I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. No, thank you. We appreciate it. Welcome aboard. And, uh, <laughs> and I just want to take the time that, you know, we also have other unfilled positions, you know, on different boards whether they're you no know, full board members or alternates. So if other people are interested in becoming involved in the town, yeah. there are opportunities. So thank you very much. Um, Andy Buckman is not going to be here tonight to talk about the new sign. Um, and that brings us to our MS4 stormwater project. And <coughs> You uh, give us a couple of minutes here. We'll uh, get out of your way, and you can set up the projector.
Yeah, the cursor, it's like it's jumping left and right and clicking around on its own. Alright, so maybe you better try the um, mouse pad. Well, that does the same thing. It's doing the same thing. Oh, that's a little bit better. Maybe I can... I don't know what to tell you. What are you trying to get to? I'm just trying to get to the, the Adobe that was up in the documents. Is there a remote uh, desktop on this right now? Um, what I'm thinking is it's trying, it's pulling the phone. Now it's randomly moving the document. So we'll try it. All right, so uh, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jason Reddy, and this is Peter Heil with uh, Milo and McBroom. Hi. We were tasked with uh, doing a stormwater project. This is kind of the end of phase one for the uh, conceptual um, portion of it. And if I can make it go, uh, I'll just, uh, just kind of as a really brief introduction, it was kind of a two part two. Um, the, the project. Uh, so it's taking care of the stormwater outfall, uh, I think it's 007, and the other part was kind of redoing the road, and I think through the process we've kind of settled on having a reconstruction of the road, but I mean that's for uh, your consideration and decision tonight. Uh, but the other, only other part of the project that I kind of want to introduce right now is the kind of the second bullet under project objectives, which was provide aesthetically pleasing, safe, and environmentally friendly stormwater solutions. Yeah, see, this is, I'm not even touching anything. See, he's just <laughs> jump, he's jumping around on its own. Um, so uh, uh, the, the point here is it's not just taking care of the stormwater, but because of the location on Moulton Street, which is next to the town's uh, property where there's kind of envisioned to have a park, uh, we wanted to have uh, a, an, well, I mean, as it says, an aesthetically pleasing um, design that would not take away from any future uses of the property. Um, with that introduction, I'll hand it right back over. I'll hand it back over to uh, Peter, who's going to kind of go through um, the, the project so far, some of the decisions that were made, and then end with, uh, you know, with the decision and guidance from the select board on uh, how we're going to move forward with the concepts from phase one. Yep. Thanks. Um, if you can, if it works, throw the plans up there. If not, I have hard copies that I'm we can do my best. Um, it's got a mind of its own. Oh, I um, So I guess Jason got it, which is good. Um, so Moulton Street, um, as you're probably aware, is in a pretty bad shape. Um, the existing conditions, the, all the pavements cracking, um, the soils underneath aren't great. Um, we haven't done any exploratory digging or anything like that to see what the actual subsurface looks like. That would be part of the actual design phase of things. Um, but based on our recommendations and kind of agreement with everyone on staff um, we're we're planning on moving forward with uh, full depth reconstruction of the road so what that means is we would be taking off the pavement removing all the gravel underneath and building new um, we have had discussions with uh, the water and sewer department um, their existing infrastructure is in relatively decent shape so at this time they don't have any plans to improve any water or sewer um, but as part of the project and in, in conjunction with the the stormwater outfall we would be um, installing new subsurface uh, stormwater conveyance pipes that would lead to the outfall um, part of the town's ms4 requirements um, is um, do you can you just shut that off <laughs> it's bugging me sorry <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the hard copies because it's just jumping around and kind of need to focus on um, each concept. 
So what, um, what we were tasked to do with the outfall is kind of come up with different um, outfall concepts uh, to treat the existing stormwater um, for the area. Uh, it's going to meet the town's MS4 um, stormwater permitting and it's also going to meet uh, Chapter 500, uh, DEP Chapter 500 stormwater water, water quality uh, treatment, um, treatment requirements. So in doing that, we looked at a couple different ways on how we could do it, um, what we'd be doing. We looked at the drainage area and um, the limits of extents for not only the um, full depth reconstruction of the road, um, but also what area of stormwater runoff is actually flowing into this outfall and what we need to treat, how big and how to size the system. Um, how we're going to convey everything. So part of that, um, we're going up Copeland a little bit, um, kind of picking up all the stormwater running down Copeland. These um, dashed black lines are going to be subsurface um, stormwater conveyance, uh, which will be collected via new shallow roadside swales. So as part of the road, roadway reconstruction, we're going to be formalizing some shallow grass channels along the road. Right now, there's just some kind of informal paved swales. Um, so we're going to be formalizing it. The grass provides better treatment um, per Chapter 500 standards. Um, it also slows the velocity down compared to pavement. If you have water running over grass versus pavement, it's going to be a little bit slower. Um, once it gets into the pipe, though, it, it will move. Um, so back to the limits of extents, we're going to be starting in Copeland doing a small section of 2nd Street and then the majority is along Moulton Street with, with the leg of 1st Street being picked up by a new um, stormwater pipe. So the water kind of all flows towards the river, um, collected via new catch basins and stormwater pipes. Um, and then. Um, on this section, kind of flows down here. I'm sure you guys are aware of the existing conditions, but there's a pretty steep hill right there uh, that we're going to be looking at. We haven't formalized any finished grading, but we're going to try and make it better. I know some residents have expressed some concern, um, so we, we want to take a look at that. Um, part of the section of Moulton Street along the Future Park area, we are providing new um, six new parking spaces and a new sidewalk that will connect the future park. Um, there's an existing path, and I know there's plans for a potential bridge to cross the river, so we're going to maintain connectivity uh, to that path. And if the park does develop and they um, do some trail network or something, the, the sidewalk will provide connectivity to that as well. Um, so the stormwater uh, water quality stuff, um, we looked at a couple different options. What we're presenting tonight is kind of two different options. There's a 2A and a 2B, uh, what we'd like uh, for you guys to decide tonight or after you discuss it, um, is kind of give us a, a choice on what you want to move forward with. Um, we've talked to town staff. We kind of have their opinions on which which way they'd like to move forward, um, but you guys will ultimately need to tell us which which way you guys like. Um, so the first one here, um, I'll show you the pretty picture first. So this is the corner of Moulton Street. Um, right now, there's kind of an existing outfall there. Um, what this is, it's called a focal point system. It's a proprietary um, structure. So waters, water enters in through the um, underground stormwater conveyance pipes into kind of a level whip spreader area. And what that does is it removes all the sediment that could have been trapped within the pipe or flushed sand from uh, salt trucks or something like that. And so this level lip spreader kind of acts as a sediment trap so it doesn't clog up the actual water quality treatment area. So the water quality treatment area, um, it's going to be depressed about 18 inches. So there will be a little bit of a detention area. 
um, but really what the purpose is is to provide the water quality treatment. So when water enters and flows into the treatment center, it will infiltrate into the sand and it gets the infiltration through the sand, particles, phosphorus, nitrates, kind of bind to the sand similar to a Brita filter almost. Um, so you're getting water quality treatment through there and then there's some detention underneath the system um, with these chamber boxes and then will outflow into another, another level lip spreader um, which kind of acts as um, to reduce energy prior to water discharging over the bank and into the river. Um, so that's option number one. <laughs> the second option is kind of 2A and 2B. Um, so the water quality treatment um, is the same, the outfalls, we just provided two different outfalls to kind of integrate into the park differently. So the water quality treatment is via a modular wetland system. What that is, is kind of a precast concrete box with that sand media that provides the treatment within the box. Um, we're collecting it. There's gonna be two different systems, kind of the north-south section of Moulton Street, and then the larger east-west section would go into two different boxes. There would be underground piping that gets conveyed into a drainage manhole. And then this is where the two options kind of differ. Um, this one enters into a level lip spreader and then kind of gradually flows via a shallow channel to convey into another um, level lip spreader. The purpose of this, or the difference between that one and this one is there's less underground piping. Um, you are exposing the water, so you have a kind of more natural feel to blend in with the park. Um, this one kind of collects the two systems into one and then you'll just have one pipe to one level lip spreader. So this one has the minimal impact of all of them, as you can see. Um, both, or all of them, provide the water quality treatment. Um, all end within a similar level lip spreader prior to discharging over the bank. Um, we met with the park committee and abutters. Unfortunately, most of the park committee didn't show up, so we you know, discussed it with town staff on you know how to blend the different options into the park as best as possible and kind of had another meeting with town staff, public works, the water and sewer department to see what they're going to be liking for maintenance requirements, um, if there was any questions. What everyone kind of decided on um, was everyone seemed to like the focal point system the best. Excuse me one second. So this is, uh, this is the engineering plan that shows the focal point system. So you can see the water being conveyed um, into this level lip spreader, which discharges into kind of the water quality detention center. And these boxes underneath are where you have additional detention, which then goes underground and daylights into another level, level lip spreader prior to discharging over the bank. Um, so based on comments um, from Public Works, from town staff, everyone seemed to move forward. The city of Portland has used fo focal points um, numerous occasions and have had some success with it. Um, I think people are a little bit more familiar. Those, um, yeah, the handouts that I pointed gave out uh, or the two different modular wetland system and the, the focal point system. Um, Cost-wise, um, they're more or less the same. There might be a thousand dollars difference between the two, um, but they're they're more or less the same. Um, so I think for for the outfall component, um, we're just going to be looking on looking for uh, your guys approval on which system to move forward with. Um, getting back into the full depth reconstruction, we also discussed with town staff, public works, um, on the existing conditions and <coughs> what needs to happen. Um, 
to the street for longevity. You know, you, you could do a mill and fill and just patch it, but every couple of years you're just going to be doing it again and, you know, you're just kicking the can down the road. So I think everyone's in agreement that um, to do it right and for the long term, and it's you're going to have a better system, better road. Um, we're recommending, recommending full depth reconstruction. Um, obviously, with full depth reconstruction, there's going to be additional costs associated with that. Um, so we've talked to Steve a little bit about that um, and figure out how the town wants to move forward with that. Um, but it's our recommendation and ultimately up to you to decide um, which way you want to move forward with. Um, before you go too far, any questions sure. so yeah. far on anything? It is, um, you know, you, you have the, 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 the wetlands and the focal point. It is um, longevity, you know, maintenance, which is the easiest to maintain. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's going to probably be one of the bigger drivers, in my opinion. Yep. You know, something that, you know, we don't have to keep going in there every few years to do any kind of major maintenance on it or anything. Right. So. So for the, the different systems, um, you're probably going to have to go out once a year, make sure it's still operating, make sure there's clean no leaves out, clean leaves out exactly. Yeah. Make sure the orifices are open so you're still getting positive flow. Um, but really, you kind of want these systems, especially the focal point system, to kind of have a natural vegetative area. Right. Um, the the bioretention systems, um, the the plantings within it do provide their own water quality treatment within the systems. Um, so we don't expect there to be a lot of maintenance. If, if the system isn't maintained properly, um, like if someone isn't going out every year um, to clean the leaves out and that soil media does, does fail, if you're not seeing water infiltrating pretty fast through the soil and you see ponding water, that kind of thing, it, would tend to mean that the, the media is failing and it would just have to be removed and put back into place. Um, but as far as regular maintenance, there, there really isn't too much. Um, you're probably going to mow it twice a year, um, do your annual stormwater inspection to make sure there's no leaves, all the holes are still open and that kind of stuff. Um, these, uh, these systems have worked well in the past, especially um, adding adding level lip spreaders or sedimentation basins upstream of the system so you don't get all the sediment kind of sitting on top and clogging the system um, is definitely definitely been helpful on similar projects. So the the bio part of this doesn't need to be maintained much it's just no, um, you're, we're going to work with our landscape architect who's going to um, pick out the plantings, um, but really it's just kind of low ground shrubbery, um, which just like any other garden, we're going to make sure, you know, something that's salt tolerable, especially if you're getting roadway runoff into it, um, and then just picking the right plants to make sure they don't die. Um, occasionally you might have to replace one if, if it's not doing well, um, but we, we don't anticipate much maintenance for that. Can you? Um, so back to the full depth reconstruction, um, like I said, we're going to be removing, most likely removing um, the pavement and all the gravel underneath. Um, we're going to be looking at the existing conditions of the soil below ground um, based on online mapping. It's kind of D soils, so clay material, um, where I'm not sure if there's under drains in the road right now. I kind of doubt it. Probably not. Um, so no. They, 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 probably, they probably paved right over the stumps when they did it originally <laughs> 100 years ago. Yeah, you never know what you find when you start digging things up. Um, so we're going to we're gonna do it right. We're going to put under drains in um, kind of make sure that the roadway is drained um, properly. That's kind of why the road is in disrepair right now is, is water just sits under there and that's when you see kind of what we call alligator cracking. Um, and then, you know, obviously in northern New England, frost heaving destroys roads, but 
know, we're, we'll look at the cross section, make sure that the, the gravel's thick enough, the right size stone is used, um, some under drain piping in conjunction with the uh, stormwater conveyance piping that would just tie right into it um, and kind of outfall in the same stormwater. Um, and as I said, the we're going to formalize um, shallow roadside swales to convey the water. Uh, right now, there's it. It's generally 18 feet wide, um, but there's areas that are 20 feet wide. There's areas that are 15 feet wide. So we're, we'd be kind of formalizing everything to um, 18 feet wide, which is which is still narrow, but is um, the right of way out there is super narrow. So and yeah, that's some really big trees right next to the road. Yeah, mm. Exactly. So 18 feet. I mean, it's a you know a residential area, so it's not like people are hopefully flying down this. Um, so 18 feet definitely is is wide enough. But we're going to be standardizing that so it's it's consistent through through the whole roadway system. Um, so we have provided some um, rough conceptual cost estimates for both the full depth reconstruction and the stormwater. Um, I'm not sure if you. We are getting into that tonight. No, we have a workshop on the 23rd, so I'll give you the bad news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll forward that information to you. Yeah, um, you. The the one thing that I that I did want to bring up and we brought to brought up to Steve and I'm sure you've seen it on other projects in the town is is everyone's coming in really high right now when you when you put this out to bid. So we we just want to make sure you know our estimates are conceptual estimates, but likely going to be higher um, so I just wanted to bring that up and I think that's generally it like I said um, kind of confirmation from you guys on full depth reconstruction and um, which stormwater alternative uh, to move forward with for preliminary and final design and, uh, um, and, and no we we have a timeline from the federal government as far as finishing up our MS4, you know, when is that? Not sure yet. Yeah. Waiting to hear from Christy. Yeah, so when we when we met with Christy, um, it's our understanding that as long as the plans are moving forward and we're actively working on it, it shouldn't be an issue. And we're obviously actively, actively working yeah, on it. And that's what we did last time. We put it off several time. years mm -hmm. because we kept working on it. Yeah. Yeah. They still have uh, phase two and three to come up with the designs once you say if you want full depth. So we're into uh, 2021 20, uh, by the time we really get uh, to where it has to be done. Yep. And if I can put it off another year, I'm going to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, any questions of Peter Jason? Is no. <coughs> the, um, the, uh, Park plan, that, that portion of it. Um, you said you spoke with uh, the, the highway department because they're going to be doing maintenance and things like that. You know, so, so this will allow them better access down into that area. You know, yep. Now is then what we have you know, going down over the bank. And yeah, currently it's, it's definitely going to be better. So, I mean, we'll have access along the sidewalk along the entire um, section of Moulton Street and then part of the preliminary plans um, we're going to maintain connectivity to this existing trail but also uh, what that is also going to act as a secondary thing is to provide some sort of access to, to, to the filtration yeah, system to the filtration system in case you know 12 feet wide you could put stone and then put soil on top of it so it's it's structured but they could drive a car um, I've done on similar stormwater systems in the past, but we definitely want to provide access to this, especially with the steeper banks. Um, right now, you obviously can't drive a car down there. Um, <laughs> well, you'd never get it back out. <laughs> you'd never get it back out, and hopefully it wouldn't fall over the cliff, but, uh, you know, provide some sort of access where they'd be able to get one of their maintenance trucks in there to, if, if it's a vacuum truck or something. Um, and um, how many, how many, Feet of sidewalk is this envision, and now is this you show it along Moulton Street, but coming down also Sawmill Hill. Does that include going all the way to the corner, or not as part of our scope? As part of our okay. scope is is just um, Moulton Street. Um, okay. 
I think for the future park development phase that would be incorporated into that. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And how many parking spaces did you say you created? Uh, six. Six? Yep. I, I know that you know, I'd, I'd been involved in the early plans and there was some discussion back and forth about how many how much parking we needed there if we needed any parking. Mm -hmm. But there's um, So we we tried to maximize it part of the uh, the constraining factor. Um, because we are located next to the river, um, right. we're going to be applying for a DEP permit by rule um, under um, activities adjacent to natural resources, the river. Um, and as part of that, we need to minimize disturbance as much as possible within a 75 foot buffer. So this is the approximate top of bank, and then this line is the 75, 75 foot, foot buffer. So we kind of brought the parking as close to that buffer as possible. Questions, comments? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I I tend to agree that you know the uh, the the focal point the that's what this plan is showing right you know mm -hmm. seems to be the the way we should go for you know mitigating the stormwater coming off full depth uh, three construction yeah. roads full depth three construction if we're going to be digging it up and putting pipes and stuff in. Do as I can't do see, got to do it right. Piecemeal, it. especially like you said, in, in some places that road is probably closer to 16 feet than, you know, 18 feet even. Yep. So, um. great. So you, you said we've got a workshop. You said we've got a workshop on this. Uh, 23rd. 23rd. I'm going to be after our meeting, which will be a short meeting. We're going to get into the bigger price capital projects that we're looking at for the next few years, which, okay. and this will be one of them. We'll have a little bit better idea on cost and we'll scare you with it, but uh, it's just stuff we need to do. Yep. And, and we don't need a formal vote or anything. I don't think so. No. no. Just you know, give yeah, you the direction to. Formal, tell us which way. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I definitely like the vocal point. Yeah. You know, the, the echo. <laughs> I think it's between the overhead and the speakers and his speaker and everything. So, um, but yeah, the full depth reconstruction would probably be what we really need to do. Even though I'm gonna faint when I see a price tag. Yes. But <coughs> as, uh, we got to do it. We might as well do it right. Right. How many feet are we talking about the whole project? Of roadway? Yeah. Uh, about fifteen hundred. Mm. De decent size. That, that that's that that's uh, including coming up Copeland and first that part of yeah Copeland um, and first street because we have to yep. pick up all the yep. drains with the, coming with down the first street um, fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred yeah about that very good thank you your homework gun there you go thanks guys no thank you. Um, unfinished business, we have nothing listed. No. Is a town manager report. Uh, just a few things. Uh, we sent out uh, notices uh, for the upcoming lien process. We had uh, 430 uh, notices going out. Uh, it got quite a bit of attention. And by the time we uh, sent lien, the lien notices are going out, we had 281. So we had mass rush to get people in to pay, which was nice. Yeah, I was um, wondering why it was so busy last. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, mu how much of an impact was there as a result of the systems being down yesterday until mid-afternoon? It was a real nightmare. Uh, we actually uh, lost power um, and two servers went down. Um, so we come in Monday morning, nothing's working. Telephones weren't working and uh, fact we got the telephones up and working. Um, but it wasn't until on 2.15 to 2.30 that um, the uh, servers are up and running right. So staff had a, it was a real nightmare for everybody. And you, you forget how much we rely on the internet for what we do uh, and things like that. So, uh, but they, we have good staff and they hung in there and uh, they got it all done as they always do. So uh, hats off to them. Uh, we had a uh, union negotiation meeting this morning. Um, I thought that went fairly well. And uh, 
I think we're close to getting all the articles that we were looking to, and they were looking to get updated, which we, I think we've done that. We just have to finalize on uh, wages. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of insight. We haven't formalized it. They haven't made a, a commitment to anything yet on that. So but it went well. Uh, just for the public's uh, notice, we're, we'll be doing roads, paving uh, the third week of uh, July. They'll start with finishing up Wentworth travel there as well as Logan, and then probably the first week of uh, August, uh, we'll be tearing up Pine Hill and Worcester Road, which we will have more information on that as, as it proceeds to give people a heads up of detours and it will jam up the traffic a little bit, but it's going to be a, a good project to get done. Um, so are we going up Pine Hill into Worcester? No, we're going up to the top of Pine Hill where the, the tank is, the yep. standpipe. Uh, that's, they wanted to go further, but we really don't have the funding for that. So uh, we just we had planned to do Pine Hill in sections to begin with, not to eat up all the money on one road. So from once they get Pine Hill done, uh, they'll go over to Worcester uh, and they'll grind that. They'll probably grind them all at the same time and then they'll have to, all the ditches, my public works has been working on that. Everybody, I'm sure, has seen them. They have to get some grass seeded and stuff like that, but they're pretty well done with culvert replacements and things. And they did some uh, prior year anticipating that we would be doing that road in the next few years. Are they doing all of Worcester at once? We'll do all of Worcester at once. That won't take long to grind because it's only held together by patch, most of it, so uh, pretty bad yeah, shape. <laughs> and the crew will get over there to do some ditching um, before that gets all done. Um, and we will be doing uh, that parking lot. We're just waiting for another price, the employee parking lot. That was part of the downtown project that was first talked about with the traffic study. Um, and we have getting two prices. Um, we're just waiting for that, and uh, that will be taken care of and all striped. And we'll get, we're going to gain, I think, 15 parking areas spots, which would be really good. Um, there's this notice on the uh, DCTV and also on our webpage about the Hubbard Road Bridge. Uh, last year, they were in for a public hearing. Uh, nobody showed up except the selectmen. Uh, they wanted to know if they needed to come back, and I said, I didn't think so. We'll put it up on what people view it the most, which is BCTV and our webpage. So it's, they'll be going out to bid. I don't believe the project will start until the spring of 20. But we'll we'll see. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's all I have for now. Okay. Um, I have no selectman's communications. And, uh, accounts payable. <coughs> I have an account payable warrant. 1951 from June 20th, 2019. The amount of $168,851.08. A water warrant, 0951 from June 20th, 2019, for the amount of $224.06. Payroll warrant, 1951 from June 20th, 2019, for $63,380.07. <coughs> Account payable warrant, 1952 from June 27th, 2019, for the amount of $58,935.19. A water warrant, 0952 from June 27th, 2019, for the amount of $2,711.09. Payroll warrant, number 1952 from June 27th, 2019 for the amount of $59,212.83. Account payable warrant, 1953 from June 28, 2019, the amount of $17,548.42. <coughs> Account payable warrant, 1954 from June 30th, 2019, for the amount of $120,000. $431.03. A 
Water Warrant 1953 from June 30th, 2019 for $49.16. I like those kind of bills. Uh, payroll Warrant 2001 for January, uh, July 3rd, 2019 for the amount of $73,078.84. Account Payable Warrant 2001 from July 3rd, 2019 for the amount of $97,866.09. Now make the motion to pay our bills. I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That brings us to our new business. Mr. Paul McKinney, our assessor. <laughs> and preliminary values. Yeah, good evening, everybody. We've been working on the uh, revaluation for the last eight or ten months or so and adjusting tables and going out and measuring all the sale properties. Uh, so we measured all the sales in town that were qualified sales from April 1st of 2017 through March 31st of 2019. Um, those that we didn't get into, we did send notices out to do callbacks. We went out and did those uh, to the people that did respond. And we'll probably pick up a few more during the, uh, you know, the preliminary hearing. So, uh, so as a result of the reval, um, the overall value is going up by... 76,785,400, which is approximately 11%. Um, and that's a reason, and we base that on the, uh, the 293 sales that occurred during that, that time frame. Um, residential values on an average are going up about 8%. Uh, manufactured homes, 2%. Condominiums, 14%. Vacant land, 17%. And commercial, 24%. Um, I, one thing I would like to make a note to the public is that don't when you get this notice of your new value don't apply the current year's tax rate because the tax rate will be adjusted according to the new town's value at the uh, time of commitment so I, I don't want everyone out there to get nervous and say oh my tax my bills tax is going up 11 percent that ne is not necessarily the case it all depends on what the the final values are um, so as a re as a result of that um, we are the uh, median assessment to sale ratio, which is the um, where the assessments are compared to what the market value is, is going to be around 97.9, 98%. Um, over that two-year period, the International Association of Assessing Offices guidelines are between 90 and 110. That's also, you know, for the main criteria as well. So the coefficient of dispersion, which is our quality rating, that's the distance from the median our, our sales met. Um, we're at 8.23 for the two-year period and then 7.93 for, for a one-year period. Um, the guidelines say we should be below 20. So I usually try to get below 10. Um, if you go any lower than, you know, 7 or 8%, then you start chasing sales, and that's unlawful, and they kind of uh, frown upon that. So uh, the 8.23 is means that all the sale, all the properties should be fairly, um, you know, fairly equitable based on the sales that we inspected. Um, the PRD is the um, price-related differential, and that's the measurement that we use to differentiate the low-end homes from the high-end priced homes. Um, the guideline is between 0.98 and 1.03. We're exactly at 1, um, which is saying that I'm not valuing mobile homes any more than the, you know, the three or $400,000 homes. Um, my plan is to uh, get preliminary notices out this week, towards the end of the week. Um, we'll take calls in our office. They'll have the opportunity to either call and make an appointment in per, you know, uh, by phone. They can go on a website. The website will give that they can schedule their own appointment or they can, um, uh, you know, they can call and we can set up a phone hearing where people, if they can't make the in-person appointment, will be able to communicate by phone or uh, they also have the opportunity to send in a letter or some information if they'd like us, you know, to consider their value. Um, We'll hold the uh, hearings, uh, an informal hearings, will be held probably upstairs in the town hall from July 22nd through August 2nd. 
Uh, I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, and possibly uh, Friday in the morning. Um, I can do a later evening so that the people that work during, you know, later during the day, I can probably stay till six or you know six o'clock or something some nights and make sure we get some of those people. Uh, certainly won't turn anyone away. If somebody's got a question, you know, by all means, we'll make arrangements to uh, you know to take care of them and, and talk to them. Um, so I, I guess what I'm looking for tonight is a um, just permission, I guess, or an acceptance of these values. And um, as I said, I'll get the notices out this week, and we'll just move forward. Any questions? Any Paul? questions or anything? Or this is related to the going out and inspecting people's homes and judging yes. the values and making sure that yep. yeah everything is as it should be compared to what the town records are and stuff like that. Or yes, and it's also to adjust the um, uh, the tables that are in the database in the camera system, the computer assisted mass appraisal database, yep. uh, to current market rates. So we um, we look at all those sales, we take that those sales and we break them down into diff different you know the building size, the style of the home, the lot size, uh, the the neighborhood that it's in. We take that information and that's where we kind of adjust the tables according to what the sales tell us. How often do you do this? The town the state requires that you do it every ten years or uh, when the assessment to sale ratio falls below seventy percent. So our assessment ratio wasn't too bad. It was probably in the low 90s. Um, but there were a lot of different sectors or different types of property that got out of, you know, out of whack over the last, uh, I believe it was been like 13 years since we've done a, a you know, reevaluation. So, but the value is that overall, it hasn't been that bad. The market's gone up um, and it's, it's come down, but it's also, then it's gone back up. So, I mean, we're not really... Uh, some of the towns that I'm doing right now in New Hampshire that uh, I do every five years went up 25 or 30 percent. So that's a, that's a pretty steep jump for you know taxpayers to to see. So these hearings are for people that might want to argue that their property isn't yes. worth as much yep. as you're yep. now claiming it is. That's right. Yeah, okay. we'll send them a letter giving them the old value, the old assessed value, what they were assessed at last year, and then we'll give them the, the value that we're proposing. Uh, for this year's value, and if they have a question of how we did the, you know, the process, or um, maybe we have some information on their property that wasn't accurate, they want to correct. Um, they may have an appraisal that they did from refinancing, or just bought the property, or whatever uh, that they want us to take a look at. So this allows the public to uh, kind of participate in the in the reevaluation. Is the, so over the last two years, you've been looking at you know the sales and things. Yep. Is, is um, just for my own interest is um, you know new sales. Um, are we seeing more of the big McMansion type homes or the smaller no, homes nowadays? No, I think the I mean what I've been seeing on the new homes are probably in the low to mid three hundred ranges. Uh, land values has gone up probably oh, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you know that said that went up to the seventeen percent. So. Um, we don't only use vacant land sales. We take the sale property and we extract the building's value that, that's on that property. And what's left is the land value. So we look at that land value across the town. And it'll show you that the land over on certain areas of town sells for more or less. So that's how we adjust our tables to, to account for that. So usually the main roads are probably a little less desirable than a than a cul-de-sac or in a, you know, a subdivision or... Or well, cemetery uh, road or Swister <laughs> road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 236, you're probably going to have a lower land value than if you're out on, uh, you know, some of the little subdivisions that are out there. So we use a neighborhood code uh, to differentiate the value. So there's a factor that's applied to those properties. And the reval process makes sure that we're consistent when we do that. So my neighbors should thank me for all the junk in my yard for dragging down their That's property right. values, <laughs> That's then, right? right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. um, um, and I, I, I just want to make it known to the public that if you have questions about your valuation, you can come in at any time Anytime. and look yep. at your card and talk to the assessors. Yep. Exactly. So, yeah, and so. it's online also. If you go to that uh, vgsi.com, visiongovernmentsolutions.com, uh, um, you can look at your value there. I'll make sure that the... The new values are updated as well, so they'll be able to go and look. And there'll be—I'll print books um, of everybody's value by street, 
by name and by map and lot number. So if somebody has a question, they can come in and look at what, you know, the values on their street or their area or their neighbors or whatever so that they can, you know, make sure that if the homes are similar, they're similarly priced. Yep. Any further questions or comment? No. It, um, as far as I'm concerned, is I think you've done a good job and you know, the numbers all seem to be coming right in the middle of the road yep. everything. Yep. So. I say, you know, continue on. Okay. All right. Yes. So. Very good. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Bring this to LC Weeks. And I'm branding. I don't know if I can say anything. But I feel like well, for those who weren't at the workshop, I'm not sure who was. She gave a presentation with, with the planning board and the vision board. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. On the branding. And uh, James did a real nice lead into it. Everybody absolutely loved what you did. So um, made me go and change my branding. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I, I have whole new branding on my website just awesome. because of you. Aww. There you go. She just say that. Now she's going to send you a bill. Yeah. <laughs> do it. I asked her to do it. I would do something. <laughs> uh, Tonight, the board needs to vote to accept the brand that they saw, that everybody was. The logo and everything. The logo and everything. Yep. yep. Okay. And, uh, so, yeah. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, move ahead with the uh, new branding for the town as, as, propo as uh, shown to us and uh, as, uh, I look forward to being able to uh, buy some you know, merchandise soon. I yeah. second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Much. Thanks. Nice job. Now, do we get to see the sweatshirt? <laughs> well, the plan is to roll it out at the um, the concert. first concert, so we're, mm -hmm. which is going to be the third, so we're going to have some right. graphics printed up. So we're basically waiting for tonight to get the stamp of approval so we can move ahead with stickers and merchandise and things like that. So. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next is uh, the estate of Emily Rep Easement Deed. Um, this is a uh, complicated and confusing. I know, I read thing. it. I read it three, three <laughs> times and I still don't understand well, it. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give a little bit further background and history. This is up on Logan Street. Is, uh, up until recently, Logan Street was actually three different streets. It was Logan, Highland, and Winslow. Yeah, Winslow. Um, we changed it all to Logan for the the 911 E911 thing. Um, but there are two areas where there were proposed extensions of Highland Street and Logan Street that never took place. Um, the town has the legally has the right of way, is my understanding, for both areas. But is when the Dobson Woods project was being proposed. Originally, they were going to be putting, I think, two apartment buildings out back there. And uh, <clears throat> when that was being proposed, is they were going to use that portion of Logan, which is Old Highland Street, as an emergency access. And at the planning board, there was quite a bit of pushback from the people in that area that, you know, at that time, they were saying that the town had lost all our rights to it, but we never gave them up. In what year was this? That was, oh, probably close to 15 years ago now, I mm. believe. And then with Envision Burwick came on board and started getting going, and we did the trail committee, as they put the, uh, the what was called the Penny Pond Trail through there, and the uh, trail committee was talking about, you know, using those right of ways. And again, we got a lot of pushback from the people that live in that area that they didn't want the public in that area. Is, um, but the town never gave up our right of way. That's right. And, um, so the town still owns them as far as we are legally concerned, I believe. That's my take on it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so is because of the, the confusion, the haze, everything, is the, the estate of the Emily Rep is looking for us to 
basically just say that they have a right of way, access to a town right of way, is what I understand. Yes. Can I feed more into yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> the, way, the way the deed is written, and, and what you're, if you're going to sign tonight, um, they have uh, an easement to come in and out of that road, to come up, get off Logan, to go up the old Highland Street, and then also to exit. Uh, but what I have heard and seen is they, that easement is also you had been used as a parking right. for them, which that's not the, my take is it's not the intent of the easement. It's, it's not their property. They have the right to cross back and forth. Uh, so um, I've been emailing back and forth with our attorneys uh, and even they were a bit confused. <laughs> and there's not a lot of documentation at the uh, registry, so. Um, but I think it's clear that it was supposed to be used for an easement. Um, and I think, um, if you don't mind waiting until I hear from our attorney, that uh, I want to make sure that that's clear in, in the deed. It is only an easement, it is not give them the authority to use it as a driver, you know, a parking lot for their cars. Because that will end any conflict if anybody wants to go out to the trail to Penny Pond. And, and the reason that didn't get developed out there, one of the reasons is because it's wetlands. And um, the DEP, there's a covenant that goes with this that deed for that property that in order to change any of that, they have to go see the, we would have to go to the DEP. Right. Uh, so um, I think it would be best for us to get a, get a clarity. A little bit more legal, legal clarity. Yeah, I, I, I really think it's in our best interest yeah. down the road to do that, but that's up to you. If you are comfortable with what you're reading, uh, you can vote and sign it. Um, it is, you know, I, I would prefer to have you know, the okay from our legal team, you yeah. know, before we do anything, you know, we're, you know, because it's going to be a permanent thing once we sign it. Yeah. And uh, I just want to make sure. And um, the, <clears throat> the, uh, you talk about the wetlands is one of the reasons they uh, didn't put the two apartment buildings back there is because they would have had to build a bridge over the stream and uh, that was cost prohibitive for them. And uh, so that's when they went to just the houses and then deeded the rest of the property over to the town, you know, for the Penny Pond area. So just to be clear, this is vacant, this is just vacant land, right? That well, the, if you go out to Logan. Yeah, there's, and, and there's the curve. where the bend is, yeah. there's a paved uh, driveway. It looks like a driveway. Right. That that's what it's is, been used as for yeah, decades. Yeah, that is the old Highland Street. Yeah. Okay, but there is a house there, but there is nobody could build beyond that. I think the house was there for a while. Yeah, it's been there quite a while. Yeah. Well, since the person who owned it died 30 years ago, I would assume it's been there for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, and there's been some pushback from what I've heard. I haven't experienced it, but. Yeah, you know, like I said, is when, when the town looked at, the, the, the trail committee was talking about, you know, the, the Penny Pond Trail coming through there, there's uh, quite a few people in there, you know, with all those houses involved in there came down saying that they didn't want, you know, the public in there. And um, <coughs> Ron, Ron Vigu was the attorney that did that, and I really want to reach out to him and get a little bit more clarity if you yeah. can recall what that was. So, just from his perspective, yeah. I did get an email from him that said the ball's in my court. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think there's any rush, so I think we can wait two weeks yeah. on it. At, I, I think yeah. the uh, Susan Tebow, she, I think she has a buyer uh, for the property, uh, but um, I think we need to make sure our ducks are in the row. Yeah, that's my advice. Especially with other people already being. Considering it a hot button issue, right? Wouldn't want to rush it. Yeah, and we need to make sure the documents are correct too. Yeah, <laughs> because they, they've got Noah for a signature, yeah, but they've I got Rebecca twice, and 
right? Um, so impact fees. This is something that I have talked about before. Is um, the way the impact fees are set up now is that the land, the money is taken in with uh, building permits, and um, it's split between recreational money and open land money. And um, is you know, my recommendation is to change that formula and take some of the money to put it into infrastructure, such as sidewalks, street improvements, things like that. Um, I don't have a formula of where we want to break it down yet. Well, you have quite a bit of money in both recreation and uh, But it doesn't take a lot of time state. to spend that money either. No, it won't. Uh, so you, I think we need to consider how you, what you want to do with the open space funding. Right. You know, it, do you want to just dump that into um, the recreation or do you want to keep it and just change the name? It's well, it is one of the, one of, one, of the things, one of the things I'm thinking is, is, you know, is possibly, you know, doing a three-way split, you know, and putting 50% of the money into infrastructure and then, you know, the rest of the money back into recreation and open space. Existing. Yeah. Is um is you no know, because is you no know, one of the things you know with Envision Berwick and the comprehensive plan is you no know, looking at acquiring more land in Berwick. Yeah. And, and that's uh, a recreation and, master plan. And you no know, one of the things that we've done in the past is working in conjunction with uh, Great Works Land Trust is you no know, they have opportunities sometimes to buy land and they come to the town you no know, asking for uh, like. Ten thousand dollars or something, you know, for that for a portion of it, and we've used money like that before, not of impact fees, but you know, we've ha we have voted to do that. So I, I know that there's some opportunities coming to purchase land next to Memorial Field, and I, I think that's in the recreation master plan. Right. I'd like to recommend that we take advantage of that, so we have yeah. more field space, parking, and so. How much money is in recreation right now? I th last time I checked, it was fifty-eight thousand, I think, in each. Um, so it, it gets collected pretty quick. But yeah. also, we have to remember, just for your signal, we have to spend from the time we started it. We get the impact fees, say, from one big project. We have ten years to spend that funding, or it goes back to the people who right. paid the impact fees. So we have to be cognizant of the fact of the timing of it. Right, and uh, we've had it in place, what, four? Three years. Three years now? Just two or three years. Yeah, so, yeah. As, uh, well. I think we did that when John was still here. Yeah, so yeah. It's been three years probably. As, um, well, um, there's something else that, you know, is not an immediate thing, is, um, you know, we, we get some more figures. I'll get, I'll get exact yeah. numbers and I'll ask. Uh, there's some documents I have to look at about how the funding can be spent. Right. Um, has to be for, for improvements that have come about because of the growth in the town. It can't be to fund existing programs. Yeah. Uh, so some of the sidewalks that we have, like in front of the town office, I, I'm not sure we can spend, no, we we probably spend not it on that. that. What? But if we do new sidewalks, which right. we plan on doing, right, and um, and since half of the sidewalks I don't consider real sidewalks, they just ex they're extensions just of the shoulder. And we and we have some application, you know, grant applications that we're going to be looking at. We'll have some matching funds, so we could use that as well, and right, to uh, for new sidewalks and projects like that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get that information for the twenty third, so you, we have real clarity on how we can do that. You're talking about the information on how we can spend the money. Right, and also legacy. just to make sure how you what on the open space fees how we need to you handle that because that's not clear yet. So, okay. <coughs> and so, conditional use application fee. Uh, James um, and the code enforcement officer um, did a little research uh, about what other towns are charging. Uh, they felt that we need to be competitive, uh, so they have asked you to vote, which Board of Selectmen has the authority to vote to change the fees. Um, 
I talked to James a little bit about this also. You know, uh, the application fee now is two hundred dollars, and um, <coughs> is <coughs> if you're in the Village Overlay District, it's five was is five hundred. But then there's noticing and mailing costs are extra and due before the public hearing, and James is telling me that you know that the two hundred dollars is it's $125 just to place an ad in the Fosters, which is legally required. And then the mailing and all the other things adds up to over $200. And so what happens is, you know, people check that box, say, in the $200, but then they get the notice that they have a more another bill. And he said that the $500 more closely reflect, reflects the actual costs that we incur. No, because that also includes Lee J looking at it yeah. and and things like that, you know, and uh, and that's one of the things, you know, since well, actually before I came on board again, is is uh, is we they've been really pushing is to make these departments pay for themselves more or less, you know, so that the the average taxpayer isn't subsidizing the development costs, you know, and, and things like that. So, uh, and I, I when think was the we last time we increased it. I hasn't been changed since I've been here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Must have been a while back. James said there was a pretty big difference in other communities what they're charging, and and as you can see on, if Lee J has to spend more than ten hours. It's yeah. It's 80 bucks an hour. It shouldn't be coming out of taxpayer, as Tom said. So. Yeah, I think we talked about this briefly at the uh, the workshop, didn't we? Right, yeah, we did. Yeah. 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 So. so. <coughs> Any? Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the new conditional use fees as presented by the planning board of $500 for conditional use and $1,000 for site plan review. I second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Seeing how I'm going to be going for a conditional use hit permit here, I should have done it earlier, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Can we make it a thousand dollars? Uh huh. All right. Um, is uh, we have no quick claim deeds, no abatements. Second public comment. Is the only public comment is Linda and. I think she said her piece. And, uh, um, we do have an executive session. Uh, before we get to that, under the other business non-agenda items, I just want to mention uh, Steve and I met with uh, people from Affinity Lighting again today. Yep. Is, uh, the, the doing the LED replacement lights. Is, um, <clears throat> is the cost of replacing all the street lights in town is approximately uh, 90000 to to $100,000, but the electricity savings is around $30,000 a year. So the payback would be in just over three years, and then would be, you know, saving money every, every year. Um, we also asked them to come and look at all of the town buildings, the town hall, the police department, public works, the water department, things like that. Um, and they're going to be coming back and uh, doing a tour and looking at the, the lights in all the buildings. They just finished the project in for the Rochester School District. It's, uh, is they replaced over 6,000 light fixtures in nine buildings and said that they're going to be seeing probably a 75 percent reduction in their energy costs you know sure. so is every every penny we can squeeze out of here you know is i think that the money well spent um is the we would have to go to the voters <coughs> for uh, to get the money to do this probably in november is we're hoping to get something on the ballot by them, and um, but I think that it's something that we really need to look at and really do. Is, what uh, they told us today that some towns actually go to the bank and, and get a short-term loan, so with the savings, uh, you pay it off in three years. 
with the savings that you have, which makes very right. sense. So we don't have to borrow, you know, get the money out of. Yeah, no, don't have to go through the bond bank or anything yeah, like yeah. that, you know, and yeah. get competitive rates. Um, so, is um, and they're going to get back to us, and uh, you know, as we told them that we need to get something together so that we can get something on the ballot November in November. Ballot. So, November is uh, that's something that we'll be looking at in the next couple of weeks. Yep. So, yeah, it'd be nice to get it all done because the savings would be huge for us. Yeah. We have over 200 streetlights. So. If they find more, they said the cost doesn't change, <laughs> 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 which I like that. But we have to put it out to bid or get comparative prices. Yeah. This particular company is right over in Dover. Uh, what I like about them is they they hire vets and they build all the lights themselves. They build everything right in Dover. They're all you no, know, and um, they they use you know only only the the highest quality parts you know for the LEDs and the things and uh, we've been catered to we've had other companies one from Texas which has been out to do the same thing <coughs> well, <his way>. yeah. <laughs> well, um, so is um, yeah I think it, I think it's something that you know will really help the town a lot and uh, is one of the things he said some of the towns are doing such as Augusta is they're taking the after everything's paid off they're taking the money that they save in the electricity and keeping a portion of that in a fund to do energy efficiency upgrades on other buildings and things you know so you know that gives us money that we can fall back on you know to you know insulation and solar <laughs> panels stuff. and yeah. yeah place the pipes right. pipes yes <laughs> yeah. so we have heat so <laughs> who needs heat yeah. um <coughs> anything else for General consumption before we go into the executive session? No. Nope. It is in the executive session is just a discussion. There will be no votes taken. So is uh, under Title I, subsection 405-6A, discussion of personnel. I will move that we go into an executive session. A second. All those in favor? Thank you. Is, uh, Thank you.